Charlie Dagada is in London outside the British Parliament. Charlie, tell us about the vote today happening in Parliament for more British airstrikes over Syria and mm. whether or not uh, it, people think it'll pass. Uh, it's widely expected that it will pass, and this is really an expansion. Uh, British warplanes have been taking part in bombing Iraq, ISIS in Iraq, for several months. This is expanding it now into Syria. There have been aircraft that have been involved in the coalition, but more, more in terms of surveillance. And so what this vote is today is to give the okay to Prime Minister David Cameron, who's putting this vote forward, that now British warplanes will be actively involved in bombing uh, ISIS in Iraq, in places like Raqqa in their headquarters. And it is widely expected to go ahead, partly because the prime minister said that he would, wouldn't put it to the vote unless he was confident that it would go ahead. But it's a 10-hour debate. There are a lot of people that are against this. But really what precipitated this uh, are the events in Paris and the idea, the sale from the prime minister, this, that this is Britain standing next to coalition partners like the United States and like France in the fight against ISIS. The feeling is they had to take the fight to ISIS before ISIS takes the fight here. Yeah. Certainly interesting. Charlie, I, I do want to ask you, recapturing Ramadi, that seems to be the most important piece here. You were recently in Sinjar and saw that mm. Iraqi city being recaptured by Kurdish forces. Is that an example of success in the fight against ISIS? Sinjar is absolutely an example of a success in the fight against ISIS. What I witnessed and, and our team witnessed there was what can happen when you have close air support, the airstrikes with good people on the ground. We witnessed for ourselves Peshmerga forces who could literally see ISIS targets on the ground. And because there are so many warplanes flying overhead, they would say, here's the coordinates, this is where you got to hit, and it would happen within minutes, certainly under 10 minutes. Ramadi is a different kettle of fish. First of all, you're, you're relying on the Iraqi military, not the Kurdish Peshmerga forces. They have not been as successful against ISIS. There have been some victories. This would be a major victory if it is to take place. I'm certain, I'll guess anyway, that this again will be done with close air support from United States and coalition allies working with Iraqis on the ground in precise targeting or as precise as you can. Ramadi is a much bigger city than Sinjar was. Uh, Ramadi is spread out. Sinjar was pretty much self-contained and they drove most of the ISIS militants out before the Kurdish Peshmerga forces and myself went in on foot. <laughs> Speaking of uh, more support from the U.S., special forces are being sent to the area to fight ISIS. Mm. What can you tell us about the kind of work that they will be doing there and how they will be different from combat troops working on the ground? Well, they'll be fully different from uh, combat troops, and, 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 and that's something that really needs to be distinguished there because the Iraqi uh, government has said they don't want combat troops, but they haven't necessarily said that they don't want the special forces in there. What these special forces will be uh, doing, assigned to do, is uh, primarily, you know, high target uh, ISIS members or suspects, uh, um, people that have been kidnapped, extraction, very precise uh, special operations assignments and likely to be quick in and quick out. And I have to kind of give you the picture. Irbil is relatively far away from the front lines of what's going on. So if you're going to put 200 special operations forces in there, to my mind, the idea is that they would be strike forces, that they would go out on specific assignments, two, three days, hit this area, hit that area, come back and rebase. They're not going to be exposed for a great amount of time. The longer they're exposed, more people know about it, and then you don't have the kind of force protection that the U.S. military is used to dealing with. This will be in cooperation, I'm sure of it, with the Kurdish Peshmerga forces, these little strikes and then rebasing in Erbil. All right, Charlie Dagada in London. Thank you very much, Charlie. Thank you.